Maybe you don't know, but all Intel processor from Core i3 to Core i9 processors and the AMD Ryzen, are they all basically the same? But if they are the same, why doesn't Core i9 cost $500 while an i3 only costs $100? What's the real difference between these components beyond just the name? Well, stick around and I'll tell you all about it. The processor in our devices, whether it's a PC, a phone, a laptop, or anything else, is the central piece of everything. It's often called the brain that controls it all, and its name is CPU, which stands for Central Processing Unit. If you're somewhat familiar with this, you probably know there are many types of CPUs. Today, we'll talk about the type of CPU used in our PCs, whether they are gaming setups, office laptops, or anything in between. These use a type of CPU known as X64. That number indicates the base architecture is 64-bit. Now, you probably have a processor like in Core i3, or in Core i5, or maybe a Ryzen 3 or 5. You could even have in Core i7. But as you may know, Intel's Core i9 and AMD's Ryzen 9 are a lot more expensive. Yet if you open up an Intel Core i3 and an Intel Core i9, from the outside and even from the inside, they look basically identical. They have the same cores and the same basic components. In other words, they're selling us the same processor, but at wildly different prices. However, there's an important point you need to understand. Luck. Luck plays a huge role when it comes to creating processors. Let's look at how processors are actually made to get a clearer picture. First of all, making a CPU is an extremely complex process. So complex that over the past 50 years, only three companies have managed to master it. For many years, it was just two. TSMC in Taiwan, which manufactures chips for AMD, and Intel in the United States. More recently, Samsung joined this elite group. To give you an idea of how hard it is, China, the world's manufacturing giant, has spent billions of dollars for decades trying to replicate what TSMC and Intel do, and still hasn't fully succeeded. But why is it so complex? Well, it comes down to something called a transistor. This little guy might not look like much, but for many, it's considered the most important invention after the wheel. Why? Because it's a tiny electronic component with three legs that, depending on whether it has current, allows or blocks the flow of electricity, making it possible to build circuits and encode information in binary, the foundation of the modern world. Modern processors are made up of billions of transistors. How many exactly? Around 20 to 30 billion in the latest models. The transistor you just saw is quite large compared to the ones inside modern CPUs. TSMC and Samsung have already achieved transistor manufacturing at 5 nanometers, and even 4 nanometers. Intel in this area has fallen a bit behind lately, but just how small is a 5 nanometer transistor? In this video, you can see it better. A single human hair is about 100,000 nanometers thick. You would have to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in until you finally reach the size of these tiny transistors. Yeah, that's small. To give you a sense of scale, if 35,000 people lined up a transistor side by side, it would be about the thickness of a single human hair. And what could we build with those 35,000 transistors? Well, a scientific calculator, one of those fancy ones that can even plot graphs, all packed into something as thin as a human hair. So how did humanity manage to create something so tiny? Processors are built starting with silicon wafers, which are extremely thin, ultra-pure disks made from silicon extracted from sand. These wafers go through a crystallization process to create perfect crystal structures. There's nothing in the world more perfect than these silicon wafers. To create circuits on the silicon, a process called photolithography is used. It involves covering the wafer with a photosensitive material that reacts to light. 
A patterned mask with the circuit designs is placed over it, and the wafer is exposed to light. The light prints the patterns onto the wafer. Then, through chemical processes, the excess material is removed, leaving only the circuits. This exposure, engraving, and cleaning process, called etching, is repeated hundreds of times because processors have many layers of circuits. And it's precisely here during this delicate process that luck comes into play. Ideally, every transistor would be etched perfectly. But because the components are so incredibly tiny, even a tiny impurity, a slight variation in the light's power, a small defect in the mask, or any minor issue can ruin a transistor. And just one faulty transistor can make a big difference. That's why no two processors are ever truly identical, even if they are the same model from the same factory. So back to the big question, if Core i3s and Core i9s are basically the same, why do they cost so differently? After manufacturing, processors go through extensive testing. Depending on how well they perform, they get assigned a name. There isn't a factory that only makes Ryzen 3s or only Ryzen 5s. They're all born the same. It's just that after testing, the ones that perform the best are labeled as Core i9s, Ryzen 9s, and sold at higher prices. Those with lower performance are branded as Core i3s, Ryzen 3s, and sold cheaper. There's something else really interesting. Even two Ryzen 9s from the same generation, same year and same factory, can be up to 10% different in performance. Some companies take advantage of this by buying thousands of CPUs, testing them individually, and selling the best performing ones at a premium price. Even major brands do this. For example, Intel's Extreme Edition processors are basically just Core i9s that, thanks to the luck of the silicon, can run at higher clock speeds or lower temperatures, making them more desirable and expensive. So yes, companies sell us the same basic product, but depending on the tests and quality control, the final prices can vary drastically. But remember, developing, manufacturing, and testing these chips costs an enormous amount of money. Just think about it. A transistor 100,000 times smaller than a human hair sitting right now inside your phone or laptop. That's pretty mind-blowing, and it's not cheap to make. When I first learned all this, I thought, can I buy a Ryzen 3 and somehow unlock the cores AMD disabled, turning it into a Ryzen 9 at a fraction of the cost? And the truth is, no, it's impossible. Although, to be fair, there was a time many years ago when you could do something similar. Back in the day of the old Athlon processors, it was sometimes possible to unlock hidden cores and turn a cheaper CPU into a higher end one. But today with modern CPUs, that's no longer possible. They're laser locked and heavily tested, so there's no way to unlock them anymore. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks for subscribing to this channel. I read all your comments, even if I don't reply to every single one. I truly appreciate it. See you in the next one. Bye.